Oh my goodness, Falcon 9 once again encountered an issue with its upper stage in space, marking the third time the rockets found problems since its first incident back in July. What exactly happened here, and how did Elon explain it? When will SpaceX be launching again? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Finally, after a two-day delay, Crew-9 mission successfully lifted off Florida's space coast, embarking on a five-month expedition of the ISS. August 28th, Crew-9 carried NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Russian cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov aboard the Crew Dragon capsule Freedom. Everything appeared to go smoothly. Falcon 9's first stage aced its landing shortly after liftoff, and the upper stage deployed Freedom into proper orbit. Capsules on track to hit the ISS Sunday afternoon, September 29th, as planned. But unfortunately, the upper stage found an issue after completing that job. This was reported by SpaceX the following Sunday morning. After today's successful launch of Crew-9, Falcon 9's second stage was disposed in the ocean as planned, but experienced an off-nominal deorbit burn. As a result, the second stage safely landed in the ocean, but a bit outside the targeted area. We'll resume launching after we better understand the root cause, SpaceX wrote in the post on X. Indeed, Falcon 9 has been scheduled to launch 20 broadband satellites for UTEL Sat-1 Web from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California Sunday night, but that liftoff got postponed. This proactive approach by SpaceX to handle the issue is commendable, especially since they decided to halt the next launch even before the FAA said anything. This is one of the criteria by which we can distinguish SpaceX from other rocket companies. Being transparent about an issue is wise. When you know your mistakes can be brought up in the future, it pushes you to improve, and we believe SpaceX will quickly find ways to address and resolve issues, even if some bad actors attempt to use these incidents to criticize or undermine the company. Moreover, in our opinion, this is one of the least serious mistakes SpaceX could make, as long as they know about it. And one thing's certain, every mistake can be fixed, which makes it easier to forgive, and this mistake does fall into that category. After all, nothing's perfect, and space, far from easy. The minor issue with Falcon 9's upper stage follows another issue that happened three months ago. On July 11th, Falcon 9 experienced a liquid oxygen leak in the upper stage during the launch of 20 Starlink satellites. As a result, the spacecraft was deployed too low and eventually lost. SpaceX traced that anomaly to a crack line for a pressure sensor in the upper stage's liquid oxygen system. Falcon 9 returned to flight two weeks later, completing the mission July 27th. The rocket was grounded again after the first stage failed to land successfully during an August 28th mission, which otherwise went well. The hiatus was even shorter. Falcon 9 flew two successful missions three days later, both hitting their landings. And, more importantly, the rocket was grounded in July for the first time since 2016 after a second stage anomaly in space resulted in a batch of Starlinks getting lost. Of the Falcon 9s launched since June 2010, there have been a total of four anomalies, three of them happening this year. Despite this, Falcon 9 remains the most reliable rocket to date, with a success rate of 99.7%, a number that other rocket companies in the space industry can only dream of. And just like the previous two suspensions, SpaceX will quickly resume launches, possibly even by the time we broadcast this video. With the latest Falcon 9 anomaly, it can't be considered a total failure since it successfully put the Dragon capsule into its intended orbit. And of course, we can't overlook the importance of this very special mission. Saturday's mission marked SpaceX's 15th crew mission since 2020 and the company's 10th crew launch for NASA. More noteworthy, this flight was unique as only two people got launched into orbit aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon rather than the usual four astronauts. Because of this, ensuring safety before the flight was paramount, and naturally there were going to be challenges. Before launch, SpaceX put Falcon 9 rocket in the air and performed some last-minute troubleshooting on the Crew Dragon. Steve Stitch, NASA's commercial crew program manager, shared that the troubleshooting involved the chilled water system that's used for Dragon, which provides cooling for the Dragon spacecraft and had sprung a link at the last moment, which SpaceX promptly repaired. Another problem that surfaced on Dragon resulted from strong winds in Florida. According to NASA officials, after SpaceX static-fired Falcon 9, the soot produced from the engines, which typically exhausts out to the east of the water, was blown back onto the Dragon spacecraft. NASA and SpaceX discovered the soot when they rolled the vehicle back from the site and had to clean the solar arrays from the other areas of the ship. The SpaceX team did an incredible job of repainting in particular Quadrants 1 and a little touch-up on 4 and it got all cleaned up and ready to go, added Stitch, explaining the paint's important to a spacecraft as it rejects the sun's heat and helps maintain temperatures in the harsh environments of space. This meticulous attention to detail by SpaceX stands in contrast to Boeing, which downplayed issues with the Starliner spacecraft before launch, leading to larger, more difficult-to-handle problems up there in space.
Besides, SpaceX equipped its Dragon capsule with a new feature, an emergency landing capability using the Crew Dragon's thrusters. Stitch said, We have a unique capability for the first time on Crew 8 and Crew 9. It's an emergency contingency capability for landing where if the main parachutes were all to fail, the Super Draco thrusters would fire right before the vehicle would make contact with the wire, and then there'd be an emergency configuration to save the crew on a really bad day. Adding details about the new emergency landing, Bill Gerstenmeyer, SpaceX's VP, shared that we've actually flown it on several other Dragon flights before this. This is the first time it flies on a NASA mission. He outlined that the way it works in the case is all parachutes totally fail. This essentially fires the thrusters at the very end that essentially gives the crew a chance to land safely and essentially escape. So it's not used in any, you know, partial condition. Since Dragon can land with one shootout, we can land with other failures in the shoot system. Crew Dragon's also been certified for 210 days, said the NASA officials, after work covering Dragon's windows, the structure, the rotating machinery, the avionics, thermal protection, and the prop systems. With all new upgrades, safety profile of Dragon has improved, offering higher reliability for astronauts traveling aboard. And we're confident that with Dragon's latest crewed mission, Crew 9, it's going to be an incredible experience as astronauts return aboard the newly upgraded Crew Dragon. Not with four astronauts, but with six. This is the solution to the space issue caused by Starliner after the first mission of the ISS. Starliner got launched in June with NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams. Boeing spacecraft did not get to the space station. Issues with thrusters and helium leaks impacted the mission, and NASA officials decided last month that bringing the crew back on Starliner was too risky. Ultimately, Starliner spacecraft returned safely to the Earth September 6th with a successful landing in New Mexico. However, it left Wilmore and Williams on the station with the seven-member long crew of astronauts and cosmonauts. The station crew installed two temporary seats inside the Dragon spacecraft, currently docked at the outpost, where Starliner astronauts would return home if they needed to evacuate the complex in an emergency. The temporary solution allows Dragon spacecraft to come back to Earth with six people instead of the usual four. This decision to bring Starliner back to Earth without a crew had some secondary effects on space station ops. Managers at Johnson Space Center in Houston had to decide who to take off the Crew-9 mission and who to retain in the crew. Nick Haig and Alexander Gorbanov ultimately retained their suits on the Crew-9 flight. Haig was initially trained as the pilot for Crew-9, but then NASA decided he would replace Zena Cardman as commander. Haig, a 49-year-old U.S. Space Force colonel, is a vet of long-duration missions on the ISS and also survived a rare launch abort back in 2018 when a Russian Soyuz rocket failed. NASA initially announced the Crew-9 astronauts assignment back in January. Cardman, a 36-year-old, was set to become the first rookie astronaut without test pilot experience to command a NASA spaceflight. Three-time space shuttle pilot Stephanie Wilson, 58, was the other astronaut removed from Crew-9. The decision over who would fly on Crew-9 was really a tough call, said Bauer Sox, who oversees NASA Space Ops Mission Directorate. They gave a lot of thought to flying Xena, but in this case, having someone who's had at least one flight made sense. Gorbanov, a 34-year-old Russian aerospace engineer making his first space flight, transitioned to pilot the Crew Dragon spacecraft, although he's still officially designated as a mission specialist. His continued presence on the crew was ensured by an international agreement between NASA and Russia's space agency, providing seats for Russian cosmonauts on U.S. crew missions and U.S. astronauts on Russian Soyuz flights to the space station. Bauer Sox said NASA would reassign Carbon and Wilson to future flights. That's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for checking it out and hope to see you back here next time. Take care.